Amen. Greetings. Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you. So good to see you all here this morning. Let's rise to our feet. We're going to open up with the lily of the valley. Welcome, welcome. Let's take a moment and pass the peace and greet a friend and a neighbor. Please join us in the call to worship. You belong to God. We belong to God. God is our God. And we are God's people. You belong to Jesus. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We see Jesus as our Savior. For we belong to him. You belong here. We have come together. The Holy Spirit is here with us. All glory and honor to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We proclaim that God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. We proclaim that Jesus was raised on the third day. We proclaim that the Holy Spirit is with us. Amen. There is sunshine in my soul. Thank you. 
my soul today, a carol to my King, and Jesus this living can hear, the songs I cannot sing, for the sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful happy moments roll. Jesus shows his smiling face. Amen. Glory to his name. Glory to His name. 
Grace and peace to you. Today, our servant spotlight is Anya. Give her a warm welcome. Good morning. My name is Anya, and I currently serve in our youth ministry as a fifth and sixth grade Sunday school teacher. And I just have to say that my parents instilled in me um, serving from a very young age. If you don't know my dad and my mom personally, let me just tell you that Pastor Tony and his wife took time off and vacations and took us to Umcor Sager Brown, where we kept working, and I don't think they really got any time off um, for our family vacations. So growing up, I always served within the church, within my community, through the children and youth programs. It wasn't until my senior year in high school that I began serving as an individual beyond the capacity of serving alongside my youth programming and family. And my dad came to me and said, Anya, we have a few children who are attending our 830 service and we can't find a children's church teacher. Is that something you would be willing to do? He then proceeded to tell me how wonderful it would be for my resume to get into a <laughs> university to be a teacher, which is what I wanted to do. And of course I said yes. I didn't realize that that yes would lead to a life-changing moment for me. Um, one of the children that I got to teach every week, who I got to tell um, that Jesus loves him just as he is, was a little boy by the name of Colton. And Colton loved Jesus. He loved coming to church. But um, when I went off to college my freshman year, he would not go to children's church anymore because I wasn't there to teach him. He had cancer, and he was um, fighting a battle for his life. He had to have a lobe of his lung removed. He was going through some pretty intensive chemo treatments. And I remember in college that first year battling my own mental health issues, battling some guilt and some shame and depression, and realizing that this little boy who was battling cancer could get up every Sunday and go to church and love Jesus. And he deserved someone to be there to teach him and to love on him the way somebody taught me when I was five that Jesus loved me. So I got up and I made the half hour trip um, back home on Sunday mornings to be at the 8.30 service and I continued to teach Colton. And during that time, Colton taught me so much more because he loved me the way Jesus loved me when I didn't really love myself. God has called us to follow his two commandments. Jesus says to love God and love other people. And I think loving other people also means we have to love ourselves. And when we can't love ourselves, it is our church community who teaches us to love ourselves. So in this five-year-old boy, I was able to um, accept myself who, for who I was and accept the forgiveness of Christ. Um, Easter weekend, Colton went to meet Jesus. He got to, he got to celebrate Jesus' resurrection in heaven. And I'll never forget that as a freshman because that transformed my life. And I realized that loving God and loving people is what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. So um, I continued to serve after Colton passed away in 2008. And um, I have the hazard of birthright in serving in the area with the most need most often. And so um, at Wesley Chapel, I actually stepped away from serving with a new job that I had a couple years ago in administration at my school and um, stepped back into it when dad called and said, we don't have a teacher for fifth and sixth grade Sunday school. Would you please consider this? And I didn't have to consider it for long. By the end of the conversation, I said yes. And every week I get to be, every other week, excuse me, I get to be here um, loving on those students in the fifth and sixth grade and teaching them that Jesus loves them no matter what no matter what their choices are, no matter if they love themselves. And I don't know about you, but I never wanna go back to middle school. It was a hard time. And so to meet them where they're at in middle school every single um, time we get together in Sunday school is just a joy and an opportunity that God continues to bless me in that serving. 
And so right now, I just want to extend that invitation to you as well. Um, w our goal is to have two teachers in each youth room every single Sunday. And I will tell you that right now, um, I am the only one that meets with that youth group every other week. Um, with that youth room so first and third Sunday and fifth and sixth grade has an opening if you want to teach alongside me you're more than welcome to but I also encourage you to say a yes in whatever area God is calling you because I've never regretted saying yes and giving my time to God thank you so much thank you, thank you Anya uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer most holy God our Hearts go out to those parents who are, uh, besides their children, in the hospital wings, third floor of Norton Children's Hospital. For those that uh, are battling mental health, for parents who have children who are battling mental health issues. For the children that you put under our care, Lord, we thank you for the great privilege of being able to love on them and to teach them and to surround them with love. And Lord, I thank you for each and every person who is here, who, uh, who serves, who prays for these children, who um, surrounds them with love, who gives to this ministry so that making disciples can happen and Lord we we are your servants speak Lord your servant is listening what would you have us do what would you have us say who would you have us be we are yours God we are yours we ask that you continue to bless our worship with you as we praise you and love you and that we might love one another as you have loved us, even the least of these. Help us now to pray that which your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship God with our voices, our hearts, and our instruments. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. What a great message that goes right with this song. Amen. One and two and one and two. <laughs>
Please rise for the doxology. Our sermon series is See You Tomorrow. Today's message is Through Rain or Shine. Uh, I invite you to read the scripture with me today. Oh, yeah, we got all these names. All right, first one is Tychicus. You're on your own for the rest. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. My fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is called Justice, also sends greetings. These are the only Jews among my co-workers for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and Aeropolis. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. Colossians 4, verses 7 to 14, this is the word of God. It's for you, it's for me, it's for everybody, and for that we respond. Thanks be to God. Well, through rain or shine, last week I talked about the 37 flood um, as part of the history of Wesley Chapel. And uh, earlier this week, uh, Wayne, who is our maintenance person, uh, was uh, cleaning up one of the rooms and came across a binder with the minutes of the True Blue Sunday School class from 1934 to 1947. Pretty cool, huh? So uh, I'd like to share with you the minutes from March 18th, 1937. Here's the minutes. We met at the home of Mrs. Hubler, assisted by Mrs. Dickman. Notes on minutes were lost, as the minute book was misplaced during the flood. Meeting of April is postponed to May. There you go. That's the minutes. <laughs> Not a lot there, but at the same time, there's a whole lot there, isn't there? 
these folks were in crisis. Their homes had been flooded. They didn't have time to mess with minutes. When the flood came, they just got out. Uh, but we do know the story. They never came back and said that they found the minutes. But here they are. The minutes were found. And uh, we have the minutes from the 1930s and the 1940s, through rain or through shine. Well, I want to share with you just a little bit from last week so uh, that we are a covenant people. Now, see you tomorrow real, just simply means this whole sermon series is we're not going anywhere. We're going to be here. Wesley Chapel is here uh, as long as we do these three things, I believe. As long as we stay devoted to Jesus. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Jesus is our rock. Jesus is our refuge. And we have to devote our hearts, our minds, and our service to Jesus. The other thing is to be devoted to the mission, making disciples. This may be the one thing that a lot of churches have missed along the way. And when you see that a church is closing, a lot of times it's because they're not taking care of the mission to make disciples. Um, and they continue to meet together. Uh, they continue to worship. But there hasn't been anyone new uh, come in. And uh, in the United Methodist Church, we're big on reporting numbers, average attendance of worship, average attendance of Sunday school. And one of the things we have to report is the number of baptisms we have in a year. And whenever a church goes zero, 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 several years in a row, uh, that church is in trouble. So we are in the, in the mission of making disciples. And the mission is given to us by Jesus. Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you to obey. All right, I didn't mess it up this time. I'll let you do it. And then the third is devoted to fellowship. As they were in the book of Acts in the early church, they were devoted to each other. They are devoted to meeting together. They are devoted to praying for one another. They are devoted in breaking bread uh, together. They're devoted to worship. They're devoted to singing. And uh, you have that in, in Acts chapter 2. So here's the three things uh, that we need. And there are other things we need to do as well. Uh, but we need to stay devoted to Jesus, devoted to mission, and devoted to fellowship. Now, last week I talked about the baptismal covenant and I talked about uh, a situation, and I thought I didn't have a picture of that. And so I went and found the picture of uh, the baptism we had in March. And remember the story I told you about the four-year-old big brother who looked a little nervous. And I gave him the assignment, when we go out here, I'm going to put the, the lid to the baptismal on the table. And I want to make sure, uh, I want you to make sure you, that it doesn't fall off. All right? So there he is. My golly, I mean, that, that little lid isn't going anywhere. It isn't going anywhere. He's oblivious to what's going on beside him. You know, here we're baptizing his little sister, and, uh, and he's, uh, he's making sure that lid doesn't fall off. You know what? This, this little young man, he's going to be a great servant one day and, and probably a great husband because he's going to He already knows that he needs to do what he's told. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> so, uh, so the baptismal covenant, so when I talked about the baptismal covenant, one part of the baptismal covenant, this is our part. You know, the parents have a part, uh, and, uh, and, and we have a part. So we are in covenant with this family, and our covenant is, by faith and example, we will order our lives so that these children may be three things. Surrounded by love. Boy, did we hear that from Anya this morning surrounded by love, established in faith, established in faith, faith in Jesus, faith in God, and growing in grace. How do you get along with people? How do you respond to people? How can you respond in peace and love and charity to one another? How can you maintain healthy relationships? So that's our covenant. We make this covenant with every child that comes before us that's baptized, that they may be surrounded by love, established in faith, and growing in grace. Now, that's not the only covenant we make as a congregation. Well, of course, we take our own membership vows, and we'll get to that in a minute. But, uh, 
this child that was baptized last month, uh, our hope is that sometime around the age 12, 11, 12, 13, or 14, they might go through a confirmation class. So confirmation is uh, a class that we offer, and it's part of that covenant. So you have the baptismal covenant, and then you have the confirmation covenant. And the confirmation covenant is, is really a celebration of the baptismal covenant come to pass. It's come to reality. And so um, in, in Luke chapter 2, Jesus is about 12 years old. Well, he is 12 years old because they tell us Jesus is 12 years old when he goes to Jerusalem. Uh, his mom and dad take him, but, it, but they probably go every year. But this specific reason is when Jesus has come of age, and that is usually the age when uh, in the first century uh, Jewish culture that uh, a child passes from childhood to adulthood. So we would call that teenage years or, or preteens, uh, but their concepts are different, their ideas are different, uh, they're able to relate to the real world, and usually about age 12 is when they end their formal education and they be begin an apprenticeship so that they can learn to make a living for themselves. And so, um, so about age 12, the tradition of the church has been to, in keeping with that this is the age, we believe, that a, per, that a child uh, becomes old enough to accept Jesus Christ for himself or herself. Now, it's not a hard and fast rule. Certainly, uh, you might even have your own experience where you think, well, I, there was never a time when I didn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that was good, or, or maybe they come to that conclusion at 10 or 11. But age 12 is the age when we say, okay, we're going to offer a class, we're going to go through the, the faith, and um, we confirm the covenant at baptism. Remember, surrounded by love, established in faith. So that's the established in faith and growing in grace. And then uh, Romans 10 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So about the age of 12, uh, they go through this confirmation class. They take, the bad, uh, take their membership vows. They confess Jesus as Lord publicly. And uh, so now they are established in faith. So, uh, and we have our next confirmation class coming up this Saturday, so that's exciting. Uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, the pandemic did a lot of different things. One of the things it did is it, it, it created the longest confirmation class in history. Usually they're about, um, you know, anywhere from 4 to 13 weeks, depending on how you break it down. This confirmation class went for about a year and a half just trying to get their class in uh, because of the pandemic. But uh, so 2024, we have our next confirmation starting next Saturday. All right, go ahead. So the membership covenant, just to remind you, so this is the covenant that every 12-year-old who goes through confirmation accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and says, I want to become a member of Wesley Chapel. It's the same covenant that you make if you're an adult or if you transfer from another church or if uh, you come to know Jesus for the first time and you want to join us here at Wesley Chapel and be a member. Uh, the membership covenant, uh, after you go through the questions, do you repent of your sin? Do you believe Jesus is Lord? Will you follow Jesus? Uh, then you come to this. Will you be faithful to Wesley Chapel by upholding her with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. Those are the five areas that we are in covenant with the church. And when I say the church, I really mean with each other. You and I are in covenant together to pray for one another. So I, I, I hope that you are praying daily for the people of Wesley Chapel. Uh, my prayer is that we would be a Christ-like church in my uh, my. request to you is that you would pray that I would be a Christ-like pastor and that we would be a Christ-like church together. Uh, it would also mean we pray for, uh, if you're on the prayer list, uh, we have an email prayer list that comes out about four days a week, and when you put your prayer request uh, on the Connect card, uh, that comes out on Monday, and I hope you're praying for those that come to you uh, each day. And um, 
I, I read through them all. Sometimes I'll text somebody and say, you know, how's this person doing? Or I'll call somebody. Uh, but I always pray for that email. That uh, comes about 2 o'clock, two, uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And so uh, whether I want to or not, 2 o'clock becomes my prayer time when as soon as that uh, email comes, comes into my uh, inbox. Another, uh, another part is your presence. You know, showing up matters. Being here is important, and here you are. You're here today. Uh, your presence matters. It matters to you. It matters to the people next to you. It matters to me. It matters to one another. So uh, not only to worship, but maybe a class, uh, but also showing up um, maybe at the hospital, showing up uh, by making a phone call, showing up by sending a text. There are a lot of ways today we can show up and be present with people. Um, more than just praying for them. And then, uh, and then with your gifts, you make a, a covenant that you're going to support the ministry, and we're very grateful for, for you and for your generosity that you're able to uh, give each week or each month, however you set it up, maybe once a year, whatever your routine is. Uh, but your gifts make ministry possible. We can't do anything here without your generosity, so thank you for that. And then service I have in a, a bigger font because that's our emphasis this week. Uh, and we have uh, opportunities to serve back at the, in the lobby. And uh, I've got some things to share with you at the end of the message about service. And also our witness. So what does our witness mean? Our witness means that whenever you leave this space, you still represent Christ. You are, you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ to the world. And so uh, uh, to be a witness sim simply means to be Christ-like in the community, Christ-like in the world today. Uh, it may be sharing the gospel with someone. Uh, it may be simply acting as uh, a Christian to someone in their time of need. Or it may be just being nice to the cashier when they ring you up, you know, instead of complaining about... You know, you're out of ketchup. It was on sale. You're out of ketchup. I'm really frustrated. Uh, you know, the cashier has no control over how much ketchup is on the shelf. Uh, I know ketchup's not your thing, right? It's salsa, right? Is it salsa? But just being a witness, remember, you're always representing Jesus Christ wherever you go. So that's the membership covenant we make with one another. Uh I went back through, uh, through some files, and uh, I found uh, this one. So this is 2017. I have both the baptism and the confirmation class becoming members. Uh, for those of you that, that may have been present in 2017, anyone remember what's significant about 2017? See that 200 over there? That's when we were 200 years old. We celebrated that whole year uh, to be here for 200 years. And this was a, a great little uh, group. So uh, from right to left, uh, one of the things, there's, I think there's 11 there. And so the, the one on the far right, we've lost track of. Uh, the next one, Reagan, she's in college and she serves in the children's ministry. Uh, Natalie is in college in St. Louis. Uh, Samantha is uh, not attending right now. And then um, the next one, they moved away. Then the next one is serving in the children's apartment. The next two, brother and sister, they're in college. The other one's in college. And then the last two on the end, uh, Dave and Vicki. Dave uh, is serving you coffee this morning. He's serving, and Vicki serves in the children's apartment. And so I think that's a pretty good ratio of folks. Um, and even uh, two of those that are away from college, they were serving uh, in the children's apartment or vacation Bible school uh, while they were here uh, going to school locally in high school. And then, uh, and then the family over here on the left, um, they brought their youngest to be baptized, and their oldest child, who was 10 at the time, uh, now serves faithfully in the children's apartment. So uh, there's a whole bunch of servants represented there and the parents you can't see behind or a lot lot more servants but anyway um you know one of the things that's really fun to see is you see a child that's baptized and then if you're around long enough you see them go through confirmation and then if you're around long enough you see them uh serve as youth and then go off 
uh, to college and hopefully come back here if uh, this is where their job takes them, uh, keeps them, and they continue to be faithful servants. But if not here, somewhere else. Somewhere else. Yeah. Anyway, I just, I just love that. Uh, so go on to the next one. So our response, I shared with you the response during the baptismal covenant. Our response is a little different at, at the end of the confirmation. So the, the response, the, the question is, will you receive these before you as family? Now, some churches, if you want to come into membership, they take a vote. You know, vote them in or vote them out. Uh, we don't vote for people to be members of Wesley Chapel. It's not a vote. It's, uh, it's do they meet the criteria? Do they love God? Do they love Jesus? Do they repent of their sin? Uh, are they willing to take the membership vows? And then after they do that, then we respond. Uh, we receive you as family as we, follow, as we follow the way of Jesus, being rooted in love and growing in God's grace. And that is specifically uh, part of the Wesley Chapel uh, language because so we have the mission of making disciples uh, we distinguish the difference between believing in God and following Jesus following Jesus is uh, a little more commitment level being rooted in the love of Christ love God love other people and growing in God's grace as uh, the Apostle Peter's prayer was uh, in 2nd Peter 318 to grow in God's grace so that's that's your response that's our response so we respond that together, uh, and we still remain faithful to the covenant at baptism uh, to surround each other in love, to establish each other in faith, and to grow in grace. Okay? So it's through rain or shine, and you have uh, the Apostle Paul. So I'm going to go back to the scripture. So the names on the right are the scripture that we read today from Colossians. But on the left is from a different scripture, 2 Corinthians 11. And, and uh, so, so when Paul wrote 2 Corinthians, he's in Ephesus. He's going back and he's writing to Corinth. He had just been in Corinth for a year and a half. And uh, there are folks that come along. You know, there's some folks that come along and they want to tell you all their credentials. They want to tell you how smart they are. And they want to tell you this and they want to tell you that. And evidently that was going on in Corinth. And uh, the Apostle Paul, you could tell, is a little irritated. Uh, if you read that letter, 2 Corinthians, you got a lot of really good stuff, but you also get that he's irritated. He's irritated with some folks that have to boast about who they are and what they do. And so, uh, like, their creden they come along and their credentials and their speech, uh, whatever's going on, uh, the Apostle Paul is like, look, if you want credentials, I can give you credentials. I was flogged. I was beaten. I've been stoned and left for dead. I've been shipwrecked. I've been imprisoned. And he has a few other things that he throws in as well. And he says, but none of these are worth boasting about. If I'm going to boast in anything, I'm going to go on a boast in what Jesus has done for me. That's what's worth boasting about. Those are the credentials. When we love God and we love people and we follow Jesus, those are the credentials that we want to establish in our own lives. And uh, so basically, no matter at the worst times of the Apostle Paul's life, he remained faithful to Jesus Christ. And at the best times, he remained faithful to Jesus Christ. So the rain or shine message is about no matter what happens, whether it's a, a flood and you can't find the minutes of the meeting, uh, whether the checkbook is low, whether things are going well, uh, whether a tornado happens, uh, whether there's... Uh, a shortage of electricity and the power goes off, what, whatever happens, rain or shine, we're going to be here as a church, and we're going to remain faithful to Jesus. We're going to be uh, devoted to the mission, and we're going to be devoted to one another. Now, go to Colossians, and the reason, so now we're about 10 years later. So I wanted to show you uh, what had gone on 10 years before, and then 10 years later, Paul is in prison again. And he's gone through a lot more stuff in those last 10 years. And he, wa he begins to list some people who are important, people that have been with him through rain or shine. The first one is Tychicus, and Tychicus he, he describes as a fellow servant, one who serves alongside with him. 
So Tychicus and Paul have been serving together. They've been sharing uh, Christ uh, together. They've been uh, going from place to place together. And Tychicus isn't one of the big names that you find in Scripture, but Paul mentions Tychicus a couple of times in different letters. Then you have Aristarchus. Aristarchus is not mentioned very often, but Aristarchus is described as my fellow prisoner. So Aristarchus has also been with Paul, sharing the gospel, and now that Paul is in prison, Aristarchus has also found himself in prison. And the way the, the letter reads, we believe that Aristarchus is in prison there with Paul because he's got, um, he got some information about Aristarchus to share with the Colossae church. Um, Mark is an interesting one. So if Mark is mentioned a whole bunch in Scripture, we believe that this Mark is the same Mark that wrote the Gospel of Mark. And we know Mark, uh, who this particular Mark is very specifically because he's, he's, he's uh, Paul says, Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. So if you know the story, the first missionary journey, it was Paul and Barnabas, and they took Mark with them. And in the middle of that first missionary journey, Mark abandoned them. Mark said, I, gotta go. I got something else I need to do. I'm not sticking around. And so Mark abandoned the mission group. And so Paul and Barnabas, they finished that mission group, uh, that missionary tour. They came back. They started a second missionary group. So uh, they're getting ready to go on their second mission. And Paul and Barnabas are like, who are we going to take? And Paul is like, well, I think we should take Silas this time. And, and Barnabas says, well, let's take Mark again. Let's give him another shot. And Paul says, I'm not taking Mark. He abandoned us last time. I don't want him around. And so Paul and Barnabas decide that they'll go on separate missionary journeys. And Barnabas took Mark to Cyprus, and Paul took Silas on the second missionary journey and ended up in Corinth and other places as well. But now we have this letter from Paul in prison to the Colossians. And he speaks favorably of Mark. So we know that Mark and Paul reconciled. We also know that Mark was um, very important in the ministry to Paul when Paul was in prison. We also have evidence that Mark was uh, instrumental to the apostle Peter when Peter was in prison in Rome. So whatever happened 10 years before when uh, Mark and Paul had a falling out, uh, that they reconciled and restored, and he says that to the Colossians, if Mark comes to you, treat him well. Uh, then we have Epaphras. Epaphras, he says, is one of you. Epaphras is from uh, the Colossian church, and Epaphras is by the side. And one thing we get from Epaphras is he is a prayer warrior. He has been praying for that church. So everybody needs a good prayer warrior in a church, and Epaphras is that person. And he says some other nice things as well. And then Dr. Luke. Wouldn't you like to have a doctor along with your group as well? Now, Luke has been around for a long time. Uh, Paul and Silas did their second missionary journey. Uh, started in 49 AD. Uh, around 49-50, they, they get to Troas, and that's where Luke joins the party. You can find that in Acts chapter 16. And so Luke goes to Philippi and uh, Thessalonica and Berea and Athens and Corinth and Ephesus. And there are times he sends Luke uh, off to this church or off to this church and comes back. But because Luke is with them uh, in prison in Rome, we know that Luke's been with uh, the Apostle Paul off and on for now about 12 years. So those are some folks that are in covenant together to stay devoted to Jesus, devoted to the mission, and devoted to each other. So Wesley Chapel is still here. We're here through rain or shine. We're here together as a people. We've made it through COVID-19. We hope we've made it through COVID-19. Uh, pandemic, it was, a, it was a tough time. We made it through some denominational difficulty, and that denominational difficulty may not be over. We don't know what's in store uh, for the next month or the next year. 
Uh, but regardless of what happens in the denomination, Wesley Chapel is still here. We believe that God has put us in this place at this time uh, to reach our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and I threw in through mental health pandemic. Now, that's before I knew what Anya was going to say. Uh, but she talked a little bit. She slipped in a little bit about her own mental health difficulties as a freshman in college and how serving in the uh, children's department at the church we were at at the time uh, was the one thing that helped her through uh, because she knew this five-year-old boy was, uh, was counting on her to show up, that that five-year-old knew that he was loved, he knew that Anya loved her, and he knew Jesus loved her. Now, I didn't know what, that she was going to share about Colton, um, but, uh, but Colton was just one of those special little boys that changes your life because uh, when Colton was diagnosed with cancer, you know, we were with that family when they went through that very difficult time. And um, on the day that his mom called and said, there's nothing else they can do, they've released us from the hospital and we're going home. Anya and I went to their home and watched them take family photos for the last time. And uh, as a five-year-old, Colton went to see Jesus on Easter weekend. But we were there for that family. And that's how we need to be for each other. When we go through the most difficult storm in life, we need to be there to pray for one another, to love one another, to help each other through that storm so that we can come out on that other side. So um, the whole uh, See You Tomorrow is connected with our Say Yes campaign. And so uh, I've got some things to share with you. Um, one of the things, uh, like some of you I know, working with the two-year-olds is probably not your thing. I know some of you are doing uh, a remarkable job just to get here on Sunday morning. We're very grateful for that. So for you, I just want to tell you, be our prayer warriors. Be our Epaphras in these situations. But here's some other opportunities. Uh, we've got a nursery servant. Uh, week three of each month at 11.15, there's an opening for that. Um, worship team singer, there you go, come up and sing. We'll give you a microphone even. Uh, here's one for a teenager. Uh, if you're a teenager, you can work with preschoolers, weeks one and three. And uh, say yes to small group leader uh, for high school, weeks two and four. Uh, a special needs buddy. Someone else is going to teach, but if you want to be a buddy to a fifth and sixth grade, week one and three. Uh, here's one for a communion servant. If you're at the 1130 worship hour or 830 worship hour, you can come to worship, go to Sunday school, then 1115 you can serve. Uh, and that is one Sunday a month. I guess that makes sense. We do it the first Sunday of the month, huh? And then I have uh, three more that I want to say, hey, guess what? Last week we had three responses. We filled the small group assistant to preschoolers, one and three. Somebody's working with two-year-olds. So that's, uh, isn't that great? Uh, we had someone sign up for um, small group leader uh, K through second grade for two weeks out of the month. And we had someone sign up for small group leader preschoolers, one and three. Goodness gracious, we got two people signed up for two-year-olds. All right, now i got to tell you one other story. Over here, you're going to see this change. So I told you uh, on Easter Sunday, if you were here Easter Sunday, I gave up chocolate for Lent, right? And I, and I ordered chocolate. I ordered Girl Scout cookies that had chocolate, Samoas and Tagalongs and you know, I took them home. My family ate them, and I didn't get any. Well, we had a the, the one of the one of the wonderful people at Wesley Chapel brought me tagalongs and samoas since I gave them up for Lent, and I gave that up. So see how wonderful the people of Wesley Chapel are. Isn't that great? Um, another thing that happened along the way, we had Girl Scout Sunday in the middle of March. And we had our little Daisy Scouts. Those are like five, six, and seven-year-old uh, little Girl Scouts, and they handed out free cookies. I'm sorry if you missed it. 
And, and it worked out great for me because it was the shortbread trefoils, so I could eat it, you know. So I got one. And uh, one of the moms of the, of the lead, one of the girls, moms of the Girl Scouts, uh, she was here that March. She came back Easter Sunday. She came back last week, and she heard the message about serving, and she went back at the Say Yes uh, in the lobby, and she pulled off the facility uh, facilities to adopt a, a garden. You know, we have several different places that need weeding, and she says, this is a great job for our Daisy Scouts. Isn't that super? So we're making the place beautiful, and so are our Daisy Scouts, so... Super, super, super. If you have an opportunity and you'd love to serve, we'd love to have you serve with us. Uh, we'd love to have you pray with us. We'd love to have you continue to be present online uh, and here. We'd love to have you continue to give and support. But remember, wherever you go, you are a witness for Jesus Christ. Most holy God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for our servants. We give you thanks for the covenant that we make with you and with one another. Help us to stay faithful and true, being rooted in Christ, growing in grace, surrounded by love, and established in faith. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So our last song today, it is well with my soul. Boy, that's a great first verse for today, isn't it? Uh, steam uh, billows roll. We have an opportunity to uh, pray up here. We have our missions, uh, local and uh, foreign. We have our military, our first responders, our victims of violence, and then our prayer blanket for Wesley Chapel uh, to continue to serve in the mission. Please stand as we sing. Please come forward as we pray. Oh,
Thank you for worshiping with us online and in person. Uh, if you'd like to visit the Say Yes campaign in the lobby, uh, there's someone there to assist you to, to help you do that. And there's a whole bunch of stuff up there uh, if you'd like to find a place for you to serve. Now here's the blessing. May you as the people of God be surrounded by love, be established in faith, and grow in grace. And as you go, may you be a witness of Jesus Christ to our community. Go in peace. And keep coming back. Bless y'all. Have a wonderful week. Amen.